Hello from Gardening at Duenza here in Ireland and you're very welcome to my greenhouse and this exciting video all about 10 giant South American plants that I grow here in my greenhouse. So from Robinson Crusoe's cabbage palm to poisonous hallucinogenic giants from South America. Let's hear all about them. I love my greenhouse as you know and I love growing whatever is unusual and rare and bizarre and if it has a great backstory all the better. I grow numerous big plants which I like to use in summer as a kind of ornamental display. Now the first plant I want to talk about today is my beautiful Brugmansia sanguinea. This is the Red Angel's Trumpet and it's one that comes from South America and tolerates lower temperatures than other Brugmansias. It's a flowering shrub in the Solanum family and as we all know you need to be very careful of anything that comes from the Solanum family because this is the nightshade family and a lot of the plants there are poisonous. So it'll come as no surprise to learn that this plant has hallucinogenic properties and it was used for shamanic purposes by indigenous people in South America for centuries. What I really love about it is its showy orange trumpet flowers and it has done well for me here in the greenhouse. I keep it well watered and well fed and it's planted in the ground so it's done a lot better since I actually planted it in the border than trying to keep it in a pot. I've pruned it back in spring just to control the size and it rewarded me with lovely lush felty green leaves. I've had this plant for six years, bought it six years ago and I'm really pleased with it and delighted to have it in my collection. Next up we have a relatively new addition to my collection. I have two of them and these are Lobelia fistulosa, otherwise known as the giant Brazilian Lobelia. Now these were a gift from my dear friend Liga just very recently and she grew them from seed I know. So this produces a big handsome tropical plant with deep purple flowers that bloom for up to three months very tropical looking and very desirable and one that I'm very happy to have in my collection. So hopefully next year they'll flower for me. The next plant I want to talk about is almost on the greenhouse step. It's that one there and it's such a wet day. You know what? I'm going to take it inside to just show you it a bit better. Okay, so I'm really excited about having this plant. It's a recent addition to my collection as well, also from my good friend Liga, who grew it from seed. And this, this is the Robinson Crusoe Palm. Now, how does it get such a weird name? Well, I'll tell you exactly how. It comes from a very small island off the west coast of Chile. It's in the Juan Fernandez group and the island is now called Robinson Crusoe Island after the story by said name. So this plant is indigenous to this island. It's the only place it lives and obviously like islands that are isolated like this have the most unusual flora and fauna and this tree is no exception. So it's a small evergreen tree looks like a palm eventually and it's called the cabbage tree. This beautiful palm tree also has hanging orange flowers which I can't wait to see eventually. Now in the early 1700s a guy called Alexander Selkirk was cast away on this particular island and he spent five years there I believe and one of the ways he survived was by eating the leaves of this 
particular tree, hence the name cabbage tree, and the leaves do look very cabbagey. It just begs the question, how hungry do you have to be to try and eat something that you've no idea what it is? But when Selkirk got back to civilization, he told his story and people in England were really interested to hear about it. And one of the people listening was Daniel Defoe, who went on to write the story Robinson Crusoe. And he based it on Selkirk's adventures. And he wrote also about the cabbage palm because he had read it in Selkirk's account. So I think the Robinson Crusoe story is set on a fictitious island elsewhere in the Americas but the real story, the real place where this wonderful palm tree lives, the one that's now called Robinson Crusoe Island. So a really wonderful backstory, which just made me want to get this tree all the more. And it's a really good candidate for my kind of greenhouse because it takes quite cool temperatures and it doesn't get too big. We'll see anyway. I potted it on three weeks ago and since that point in time, it's put up this new leaf so it seems really happy and I think the trick is to make sure that I don't check it in its development and pot it on as soon as it requires potting on. So thank you very much to my dear friend Liga and you can check out her Potted Jewels channel anytime you like where she grows this plant among many others. Check back to see how I do with it longer term. The next plant I want to introduce you to is the mountain papaya, which is that plant you see there on the left with the very interesting leaves. Now, this is the mountain papaya, which comes from the Andes, where it's cooler. It's not the tropical one that comes from the tropics and is known as carica, or the one that comes from North America and is known as pawpaw, a simia, I think is the botanic name. So this is an evergreen tree or shrub, small tree, and it'll grow to about 10 meters in height eventually, which is a whopping old size for a greenhouse. It will flower and it will fruit, and with a bit of luck, I'll get fruit from it eventually, which is edible. And let me see, so I've had this plant for two years. I grew it from seed originally, and it's done really well. Got a fine trunk on it now, and it's setting out its really ornamental leaves and I got it originally to grow it for its leaves not to grow it for the fruits but if I get fruits don't worry they won't go to waste I will eat them. In terms of care I water it moderately and I've been feeding with tomato food and just making sure that it isn't checked in its growth so potting on as it needs it and it's done really well since I've done that. I think, do you know what? I potted this one on last autumn and then again in spring. So it's growing rapidly. And that's all really I want to say about the mountain papaya, except that it's a welcome addition to my collection and I can't wait to eventually get fruits. I hope it doesn't get too mad big. Next up we have the Tipuchina, which is an absolute must for anybody who has a greenhouse. Now this plant is known as Glory Tree or Princess Flowers and it gets the name Tipuchina I believe from indigenous Guianan people who named a particular plant in this genus as Tipuchina I guess. Now this plant comes from Mexico, the Caribbean and South America too and it has the most beautiful showy purple flowers. You can see my plant, it has plenty of buds but the flowers they're not visible yet. But the buds themselves they're really soft and furry and tactile and red and they just look full of promise before they even open. In terms of care, I would say this is a plant that needs to be watered and fed well to do well. It can be pruned a bit in spring. I've done that just to kind of get a better shape for the bush itself. And this particular one I've had for seven years. It was a gift somebody gave to me seven years ago. I also have this other variegated Tibuchina for six years. And as you can see, it's a much smaller plant done less well than the unvariegated one but isn't that always the way. We all love the variegated leaves but they definitely lead to a less sturdy plant. So Tipuchina, a definite must for anyone with a greenhouse. 
Next up we have the Brazilian Red Cloak which is a monotypic genus so that means it's the only plant in its particular genus and as usual I'm writing the names of the plants up on the screen because some of these are absolutely unpronounceable. Now this plant when it eventually flowers has conspicuous crimson bracts. It's never actually flowered for me and it's a very funny story I'll tell you about in just a minute. So I got this plant as a cutting six years ago and it's relatively rare so I looked up information online and there is conflicting information out there. <laughs> I think a lot of people just copy and paste. So the information I got was to let dry out between waterings and that's what I did and as a result this plant just hasn't done very well. However, this spring I read some different information that said never let this plant dry out and that's what I've been doing since and it's done so much better. It started sending up new shoots from the stems, it's much greener, I've also repotted and fed it which of course always help and it's just done so much better. So I will be delighted if this one decides to flower for me this year. So very funny story, had it for six years and it hasn't flowered yet but hopefully, hopefully this will be the year because I would absolutely love to see those deep deep red brats. Another on my list is this wonderful fuchsia boliviana and you will guess from the name that it comes from Bolivia as well as other countries like Peru and northern Argentina and it's a fuchsia but a fuchsia with the most fabulous drooping red flowers a real spectacular flower and my particular one is the Alba variety so although it's not in flower at the moment you can see that it is going to have white tubes and then red petals at the very end of its flowers and that's what constitutes the Alba form. Now after flowering this plant bears small red purple edible fruits I haven't eaten them myself but so I believe <laughs> and it's quite hardy down to about minus four although this won't be tolerating anything like minus four because it will be living in my greenhouse. I grew this one from seed and I've had it for five years and last year was the first time that it actually flowered so I have two of them and this one flowered last year for the first time and the second one is flowering this year for the first time but this one has gotten the lion's share of repotting and care so I guess that's why it flowered last year. So a bit of a sprawly plant in terms of habit but for the flowers yeah so glad to have this. The next plant I want to show you is Solandra grandiflora and this has the most amazing bell-shaped flowers when well, eventually it flowers so this is another one that has never flowered for me. So it comes from Central America and from the northern part of South America and the flowers really are very showy which is why I'm growing it but the leaves the leaves are really quite attractive too especially the new ones which have a kind of bronzy tint to them now this of course again is in the Solanum family the nightshade family so it's very toxic and all green parts are extremely toxic they can cause delirium and death but it seems that the flesh of the ripe fruit can be eaten not the unripe fruit though, or the seeds, just the flesh of the ripe fruit. So, <laughs> sounds a bit dodgy to me. But uh, yeah, this is the information I have. Now I've had this plant for five years. It was a gift from a friend. And I must say, it has been slightly abused. But I'm taking better care of it now. And I hope that sometime soon I'll get to see those amazing, amazing flowers. And this here is the tomato tree or Solanum betaceum. The tomato tree is also called the tamarillo and is native to the Andes of Ecuador, Colombia, Peru, Chile, Argentina and Bolivia. And it's a small tree with edible fruits. 
I guess you're detecting a pattern here now. I do like my trees, <laughs> my tropical looking trees. We're talking food crop here really with this tree and it reaches the peak of production after four years with a life expectancy of just 12 years. An interesting fact is that this plant will hybridize with other plants in the Solanum family but the hybrid fruits will be sterile and many of them are unpalatable. So I would love to try some of them, see what they tasted like. Now I have found this a fussy plant to grow in winter because it needs everything just so. It needs the right amount of moisture, the right amount of feed and I keep plants in the greenhouse dry and at minimum temperatures over winter. I had a number of them going into the winter last year and I lost one I think. As you see I have two plants left. But it's easy to take that kind of risk when you grow something from seed. I just really love experimenting with things from seed, trying out weird and wacky plants that you'd have no idea where to source if you went looking for them otherwise and you'd probably have to pay a fortune. And when you raise something from seed, you can take risks. You can plant some of them in the garden to see if they'll come through the winter. You can sell some. You know, you just have that much more flexibility. So I guess I'll be doing more of this going forward because I just love it. And the final plant I want to introduce you to today, oh, I say introduce but perhaps you know them already, is this Bomaria which is a climber. Now I don't know which species it is but definitely a species one because it was grown from seed. And these come from the Andes but also some come from Central America, Mexico, West Indies, that kind of thing. Now this plant is related to the Alstroemeria, which you can see clearly if you take a closer look at those flowers. Those super markings in the throat and those rich, deep, vibrant colours on the outer petals. I just absolutely love it. Really gorgeous, gorgeous plant that takes up no space in the greenhouse. As you can see, it just climbs up on the existing staging and flowers and just keep it well watered and fed. And then in winter it goes dormant and I can just stick the pot somewhere in a corner and forget about it until it starts to wake up again in spring. I've grown this one for six years. It came originally to me as a gift and I really do love it. In fact, I love anything that looks like Alstroemeria because I just think those flowers are so exotic looking. And that brings me to the end of this video about 10 greenhouse giants from South America that I grow here in my greenhouse in Ireland. And I hope you enjoyed it. Whether they are already giants or have the potential to become so, time will tell. <laughs> I hope you like this twist on just presenting content a little bit differently in terms of the greenhouse and if so will you please give the video a thumbs up or jot a comment down below. Thank you as always for your support and for watching and I hope to see you on the next plant or greenhouse video. Bye!